Welcome to the official catch up. Today I've got Andy Williamson, uh, club director and club secretary of East Stollinshire. How are you doing, Andy? Not too bad. Yourself? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Uh, obviously, uh, as I said to you on Twitter, uh, we're getting some East Stollinshire coverage finally. I bet you're glad of that. <laughs> I, I, I thought you'd fallen out with us and stopped talking to us, but um, no, uh, I think you were just in with us literally the week before lockdown. So, uh, um, aye, it's, it, it, to be fair, it's been good listening to everybody else's coverage and uh, just seeing where other clubs are at. Yeah, certainly, I think we've, we've pretty much talked to everyone apart from uh, well, your, uh, yourselves and uh, Edinburgh Uni, but again, Edinburgh Uni were another one that we sort of spoke to uh, just before this, so we'll, we'll reach out to them soon. But no, it's been fantastic. The coverage has been great. The guys have been quite supportive. Go and could uh, some of the amateurs and East of Scotland guys, uh, Highland guys coming on as well. So, no, nah, uh, as a sort of... Be- Expect really, uh, it's been fantastic. Uh, but how are you keeping anyway, Andy, through all, all this? Aye, it's uh, it's strange times, I have to say. Um, I'm probably I'm lucky on one hand that I'm still working every day. Uh, I suppose you know, in in my day job, uh, I actually look after care homes, and uh, I'm very much on the front line at the moment. So I've I've, I've been kept busy. Um, as you can imagine, you know, my life spent looking out, you know, looking out for PPE and just making sure that we're keeping everybody safe. Um, so very, very busy on that side. Come home um, and straight into football. And even though lockdown's on, it's, it's safe to say football's still as busy as it always is. You know, just between players, um, sponsors, all the things that go on behind the scenes. Uh, none of these things have stopped. So I kept kept busy. Yeah, yeah, and that's good. And I think that's one of the main things, obviously, um, you know, as individuals, some people are obviously still, you know, they've got, they've got other people and whatnot, but uh, it's, it's important to keep your, your yourself active uh, in a wee bit of a routine, even if you're perhaps not working and whatnot. But I'm a, yeah, just going by your job, mate, I'm a guessing you're you're still a busy man. Yeah, very. And I suppose, you know, as I say, I'm, I'm lucky in one way that I'm out working. Uh, and the thing that I'm probably most lucky to see is just the work that you know frontline workers do. I've got nurses working for me. I've got uh, support staff, carers, and uh, the job that they're facing just now is uh, it's a monumental task. And you know, every day I get to see just some of the the phenomenal things people are doing and some of the challenges that these frontline guys are facing. And uh, as I say, you know. I, I'm in the background trying to make it all stick together and, you know, and keep everything going. But it's just, you know, I know every Thursday night we celebrate these guys. They should be celebrated every day because the work that they're doing um, just now, I think until you're actually seeing it firsthand, uh, you just can't quite appreciate it. But, yeah, no, it's, uh, it certainly keeps me busy at the moment. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, great, great, obviously, what you said there about that. And it's true um, at the moment with the frontline workers, uh, care care homes, NHS, uh, everyone's done a fantastic job. And it's risky as well, obviously, you know, you mentioned things like PPE. Um, I've seen, uh, you know, a few nurses, um, I think I've got an elderly neighbour, basically, and I've seen them coming out and they have to put all their PPE gear on. It's uh, strange. I guess it's uh, strange for everyone as well. It is, and it, it, it's certainly something that you know. I think I think most you know most care staff are used to to wearing PPE at certain times, um, but when it becomes a stable part of your everyday life that you're having to go to work, um, come home from work, uh, wearing PPE, and it, it it just you've got to take your hat off to these guys because you know it, it, it's unusual times and. Uh, there are some of the sacrifices I've even seen my own staff given just now. Um, people staying away from families, people, you know, um, people living in caravans just to, you know, keep themselves away from uh, elderly, elderly relatives, um, sons, daughters. Um, so it's it's just unbelievable. Um, and as I say, I'm I'm very very privileged to be able to see it in action every day, uh, and it's emotional as well. You know, yeah. we've. We've lost people, and uh, those days are those days are hard. But as I say, when you see the the resilience of these frontline workers, and you see just the attitude that every one of them comes to work with every day, um, you've got to take your hats off to them. 
Absolutely, Andy. And we'll, we'll move on to, to the football chat, obviously. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned at the start, you're, you know, director, club secretary of uh, East Lanarkshire. But to be honest, you, you pretty much behind the scenes do probably a bit more than that, I would say, Andy. Um, I I think, you know, like like most clubs at our level, um, most people have more than one one role within the club. You know, I think when, when you're a director of the club you, or a committee member, as a lot of clubs have, you're really involved in, you know, everything from, you know, making sure there's sponsorship coming in, uh, making sure there's pies at half time, uh, making sure that, you know, people know what they're doing on match days. So um I'm lucky. I've got some good you know, good guys working with me and uh, everybody t- you know, everybody takes their bit on. Uh we've also got some, you know, fantastic supporters as well out there that you know, uh, come a Saturday, you know, they're the guys manning the turnstiles and they're the guys selling the programmes. So it's a team effort. Um, it's certainly, you know, club secretary wise, uh, I think any club secretary will tell you that, you know, it's a bit of a thankless task at times. Um, you're trying to keep, you know, contracts up to date. You're trying to keep players uh, informed about what's going on, uh, as well as, you know, trying to keep on the... the the regulation, um, the right side of regulation, I should say, uh, which, given you know, given the SFA, uh, you've got to be on your toes at times because you know things change, licensing criteria changes, um, you know, every club's audited, it, it, it regularly changes. So they're all challenges that a club secretary faces. Um, but it's it what it's what goes into running every single club in the country. Yeah, and one thing I, I kind of touched on with Sean Brown um, recently, especially this season, uh, the Shire TV, uh, the massive coverage that Shire have now in terms of their home games being streamed live, uh, you know, interviews, match reaction, uh, it's been fantastic. And it's I think uh, a lot of lone league teams uh, are, are looking into that sort of side of the game. I know Cali Braves, for example, are, are similar to ourselves. I think they're going to be looking into uh, sort of follow your example a wee bit as well. Yeah, I think you know, I think we tried very hard. Um, you know, obviously when we came down into the Lowland League, it was it was a fresh start for us. We had to look at everything that the club did, and I think we've kind of tried to develop things. One thing that you know became apparent to us is we've got a lot of supporters that live abroad, um, and we've got a lot of supporters that like to follow what's going on. And you know, we we're lucky we've got we've got two dedicated guys. To, uh, Dave Mack and uh, John Nimmo that do the Shire TV for us on a Saturday and uh, the coverage is fantastic and uh, as you say I think look, looking around the league um, the coverage has just got better and better and better um, year on year Yeah. Uh, as I say we're lucky we've got two guys that you know produce a, a top quality product um, you know it, it, it's also pretty well known that uh, you know we had a fairly big investment you know from the Far East last year and part of that was, uh, you know, behind having Shire TV, it was to allow people, uh, people out in China, um, to actually watch games live as they happen. And uh, it's been it's been very very successful. It's certainly from a sponsorship point of view as well, it's good. People are getting you know wider coverage, um, and certainly the highlight packages. I think all the all the boys buy into that as well. Um, I think Jamie Dushington tends to do a run of the <laughs> I think you've experienced that one as well. You asked Jamie to do, asked Jamie to do an interview, and he's off like a flash. Um, but no, I think the boys enjoy it as well. It gives them an opportunity, and it, as we always, you know, I think every club in the league, we try to do things as professional as we can. So um, having a good, a good coverage package not only means you know people abroad can watch, but it means you know twenty four hours later people can watch the highlights and. See all those controversial refereeing decisions that um, we keep getting into trouble. We keep getting into trouble for uh, writing about. I tell, um, you know, I touched on that with Sean as well about Jamie uh, Dish. Um, oh yeah, uh, I think it was the quickest interview I've ever had. But to be fair to him, he was honest. I, I did answer, uh, ask him the, the sort of harder questions as well. So um, no, it's, it's yeah, it was Dish is fantastic, obviously. But uh, yeah, in, t- in terms of your role as club secretary is it is it difficult at the moment? I know Shire have got, got a few boys signed up for next season, but uh, in terms of trying to bring players into the club, in terms of finance, uh, everything basically that's going on because of this, uh, what are the sort of challenges at the moment for for yourself and obviously the club? You're right. Challenges is a word. Um, 
we've got absolutely no idea, you know, like everybody, we've got no idea when football's going to, you know, be back. When it does come back, you know, what, what the leagues are going to look like. Um, I think the challenge is around understanding um, and trying to predict what's going to happen. Uh, we were, you know, we worked hard. Uh, we spoke to Dale and Andy uh, a few months back and started to, you know, plan out before, you know, before all this started to happen in the world. We started to plan out what like next year would look like, and uh, we were keen to get a core, of, you know, a core of players signed up. Um, and you know, we've got we've got Nicky Lowe signed, Sean Brown's obviously signed, uh, Dish, uh, Big Tappy signed, Marty Orr, uh, Reese Peggy. So you know, we've, we've we've got a good strong backbone there, um, and we were literally ready to go into phase two, which was you know offering boys uh, contracts, and you know starting to look elsewhere at players that we've targeted. Um, unfortunately, all that's been put on hold. You know, we're reg- you know we, we talk regularly with Dell, and uh, we've had to be honest as a club. You know, we need to understand what the future looks like. Um, we came out very early on. Uh, I think lots of clubs were left with the dilemma of what do they do, um, and absolutely cards on the table. You know, we we looked at do we make players redundant? Do we you know uh, do we, you know, carry on? Do we try and cut contracts short? And actually, we kept coming back to, you know, these boys committed to us at the start of the season. So, you know, it was only right that we should commit to seeing their contracts out. And that's what we're doing. But what it does do is it puts a huge financial challenge on the club. Um, I think, you know, you've only got to look at the media and it's that clubs right through the divisions are suffering with um, the uncertainty of it all. Uh, we were due some, you know, we were due some big games, and indeed, you know, we were due to have Bonnie Rig come last day of the season, and I think everybody was hoping that that was going to be a bumper day of, you know, heli- Lowland League helicopter, you know, Saturday, um, and uh, we were expecting a big crowd, which would have been, you know, a good payday for us, and it, it unfortunately, it's not happened. So, what it's it, it's made it difficult for, you know, the club, um, and it, you know, more than anything, it's made it difficult for Derek to. Uh, know what he's trying to work with. Um, we've obviously got boys like all clubs coming out of contract in early June, um, and we're at the point at the moment where, unfortunately, you know, we're having to be honest with boys and say we can't really, you know, offer you anything at the moment. There are boys there that we would like to retain, uh, but we're just going to need to see, you know, what happens. Um, I think the best thing that can happen for football is that we 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 understand when it will return, and at least then. We know what we're working towards, but right now, you know, we had a target of boys that we wanted to go out and uh, try and attract to the club uh, to build on what we've already got. That's had to be shelved, and uh, the conversations with Derek very much at the moment are um, we may well miss out on players because they may choose to resign with clubs, move on, um, but it's just something we're going to need to accept, and I think every club in, in every league is in the same position. Yeah, and it's interesting that because there are I mean, I personally know about a, a few footballers um, of decent Lowland League standard and potentially, you know, SPFL standard that don't have clubs at the moment or won't have clubs, and it's going to be a, it's going to be some market uh, once this is all over for players. It, it could really be a, a change in balancing uh, for some clubs, you know, depending on who can get in there first. I would say. I, I think you're right, and I think. You know the the evolution of the West of Scotland League as well. That's going to bring you know different dynamics because you're suddenly going to have uh, you're going to have a lot of clubs on on the West that you know like like Bonnie Rig have like Kelty have um, Bowen, Nestlin, Lithgow, Camelin. They're you know they're going to see their opportunities to you know develop uh, develop and move up the leagues, and they're going to be investing in players. So. The market's going to be, I think it's going to be a funny market. I think there's going to be lots and lots of players out there, and I suspect there's going to be lots of boys that are playing probably SPFL 1, SPFL 2, looking for clubs. Um, and I suppose there's opportunity there for the Lowland League. You know, we've seen over the last couple of years um, just some of the players that have been attracted into the league and the quality of the league. Um, and I think, you know, that's there's an opportunity there. But there's also the danger when you have got no idea what finances you're working with, um, or you know, and, and, and certainly Kelty's case and uh, perhaps Bonnie Rick's case, what league you're going to be playing in. Um, 
it, it's hard to build a squad. You know, it's it's very easy to make mistakes and you know potentially regret them down the line. So, um, yeah, I think the West of Scotland League is going to bring a dynamic as well. You know, we've seen you know we saw uh, one of our players, Willie Dyer, uh, move to Drumchapel, um, yep. who are you know one one of the new teams into the West of Scotland, and you know well, Willie at that level is a phenomenal player. Um, and again, you know, it, it, it's those kind of boys that are going to be moving around. So um, I think, we're, you know, we've, we've talked about this a lot internally. And uh, I think you're going to have players that are going to hang it out and see what happens. And I think you're also going to have players that are going to look to sign contracts very, very quickly um, because of the uncertainty and because of the unknown. And I think, as, as I've said a couple of times already, you know, it, it, it's that bit around when we're going to be back playing is the biggest question. Um, we've certainly discussed it, and if it's going to be August, September, is perhaps potentially has been muted. Um, you know, clubs won't want to commit to boys too early because you know um, bringing people onto the payroll too early, you could you know you could end up paying them months and months and months before actually anybody kicks a ball. Yeah. But on the other side, on the other hand, you've got to commit to boys, and you know, absolutely. If you want, you know, if you want to be competitive, um, you've, you know, you've got to be out there signing the right boys, and they have a value. So, it's it's a tough place to be right now. It certainly is, and uh, I feel for you know every club out there. I certainly feel for Kelty and Bonnie Rig right now. Um, I think uh, I think the position they've been left in is uh, is awful. Um, I think you know there's been a lot of press around. Uh, the SPFL two clubs, and uh, I think you know, the word's been used: self-preservation. It's exactly that. I thought Kelty's statement last week around um, you know playing with uh, with with no reward money. Uh, I thought that was a fantastic statement to make, um, and you know it, it, it proves that there is sporting integrity there. Um, don't get me wrong; I think. Every league's in a tough position. You know, I spoke to George a couple of times, George Fraser, um, chairman of the Lowland League, in the last few weeks, and I, I absolutely take my hat off to everybody that's working behind the scenes trying to work through this. Um, right the way from you know the SFA, the SPFL, the Lowland League, the Highland League, um, it, it's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare, and I think you cannot please every club. There are clubs that are going to be. Um, Upset. There's clubs that are going to, you know, gain out of this. But I certainly think, you know, if if you have champion clubs or clubs that could have been champions, it, it it's only right that they they merit a position in a higher league. Um, I absolutely get, you know, suspend relegation. That's the fairest thing to do. But, um, you know, it, 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 it's hard on clubs. I, I know how much has gone into Bonnie Rig. I know how much has gone into Kelty to get to where they've got to, and. Uh, to you know, potentially have no reward at the end of that. That's that's a tough place to be, and it's it's wrong. Yep. And uh, an interesting point made by uh, Sean Winter of East Kilbride was, uh, you know, if if it's not, I don't know. I think we're further away with the suggestion of fourteen, fourteen, fourteen. But if there was uh, sort of places uh, put up for grabs into League Two, and it, you know, maybe it was by application, would Shire, you know, I would assume Shire would put their name in the hat. Uh, suggesting you know having been in league football and, and been up there, I, I don't know if that's going to be on the table, obviously, but it's an interesting yeah. sort of thought. I think it's a long shot. Um, I think you know, I think if, if if places are available, they should be you know they should be absolutely on merit, and uh, you know merit comes through league positions in my eyes. Um, I think you know we've always said from the you know from the day. Uh, the day we came down into the Lowland League, um, that our, our ambition was to get back up, and that hasn't changed. Uh, I think you know we you know we pushed pushed hard for it last year, um, and you know ultimately, I think you know if, if the opportunity came around, absolutely we'd look at it, we would want to take it. Um, but as I, I I personally don't think it will go that way. Yeah. Um, I think it will go through you know merit and rightfully so. Um, if you win the league or you know your runners up, that's absolutely you know what you should get as a, a, a promotion opportunity. 
Yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously you mentioned about signings of their like drum drum uh, chapel and whatnot, but Darvo, uh, another another team is obviously, you know, strengthened with sort of SPFL, you know, class of players. Are you looking forward to playing some of these sort of West uh, West of Scotland teams potentially next season? I think it's something that, you know, we've absolutely embraced is, you know, um travelling to different places. Uh, and, you know, I think if you speak to any of our supporters, um sometimes the more obscure is what they're looking for. You know, we went down to Loch Thistle last year and played them and, you know, had a fantastic day out. Um, we've played Annandale, uh, you know, in the last couple of years. Um, and just, you know, new ventures. So we've always, you know, we've, we've always had a, a, a strange um, a strange following that potentially, even in the, the SPFL too, we had bigger away attendances than we did home attendances. And a lot of that was just due to, you know, your supporters like a good day out, which is what football is all about. So, um, yeah, you know, I know Darville have strengthened uh, and I think they'll continue to strengthen. Uh, you know, you, you've only got to look at the quality in the West of Scotland um, coming up through the junior ranks to uh, to look at, you know, the, the kind of clubs that are there, you know, Harrowford, Auchinleck, you know, um, we had two boys sign, you know, Mark Miller and Marty Orr signed from Lark last year. And you've only got to look at the, you know, the investment Lark's made and the, the impact they, they had. So, um, yeah, it's it's going to become tougher and tougher. And I think certainly some of the cup competition should be, you know, interesting in the next couple of years. Um, so, no, I, I think everybody, is, you know, the Shire have always been pro the pyramid. Um, even when we were, a, you know, SPFL club, we always felt that it was the right thing to vote for, um, you know, having a pyramid system. And I think we always knew that potentially we were going to, you know, we were going to be one of the first victims. And uh, that's that's the way it kind of turned out. But that's not to say it's not the right thing. And uh, I think, you know, we've, we've thoroughly enjoyed, you know, playing in the Lowland League. And I certainly, I talk to supporters regularly that, you know, the SPFL was a, in their eyes, you know, it was it was a flawed league. You ended up playing teams four times, and if you were unlucky and drew them in the cup, you could end up playing. I think you played four for Athletics seven times one season, you know, and that just becomes you know monotonous, and it's it's ultimately what kills football. The benefit of the Lowland League is, you know, you've got different games coming up, you've got you know different places to go, and um, certainly you know with with the way the east of Scotland's going and the new west of Scotland. Uh, it's going to, you know, the future. The future's good if it all comes together. I think Scottish football's got a, a unique opportunity right now to to take a step forward, and yep. uh, I, I, I just, I just hope it happens, and it, I hope it happens for the right reasons. Um, you know, you've only got to look at the statements Stennis Muir have put out and Stalin Albion have put out in the last few weeks, and it, it kind of makes you wonder, you know. Um, it just kind of makes you wonder. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm surprised, actually. I, I was half expecting to say Spartans have put in a, in a bid to Nick Four for you. <laughs> the way that was going there. No, no. Listen, uh, I think it's one of these things, you know. I think we were one of the few clubs that uh, I think that actually might be the only club in the, the Lowland League that, you know, due to the the points per game played the ratio we actually dropped from third to fourth. Yeah. Um, listen, it's you know as I've said, I I know the what's going on in the background and there's no easy decisions there. And uh, I, I I think everybody that's working you know in in the dark corridors of power, um, hopefully will come up with the right solutions. I certainly know you know as I say you know I spoke to George a couple of times and. Uh, I absolutely trust that you know he will be doing the best for the clubs that you know are in the Lowland League, um, and I think you know it, it, it's having those kind of voices sitting round the right tables right now that are, are the important things. Uh, it's it, it's going to be an interesting few weeks. I think you know there's a lot of there's a lot of unknowns still to you know come out, and uh, I think. Uh, I think anybody that predicts where it's going to land just now is, is kidding themselves on. Um, yeah. I still think there's some twists and turns. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was when I saw you, you, you referred to the statements from like Steny and Stoll and Albion there, but when I saw them, I was like, there's no chance. But then you had clubs like Clyde coming out and kind of saying, we're not having this. So 
Um, yeah, there's still a wee bit of hope, and you're right. I think it changes, you know, week week to week. Uh, the SPFL every day there's been an update basically uh, the last few weeks. So I kind of thought, you know, I, I'm watching it the same as everybody else is, and uh, I kind of felt, you know. I was I was getting pressured into putting a statement out last week because everybody else <laughs> seemed to be doing it. So I was starting to panic that uh, what the hell can I write a statement about? But um, aye, no, some of the statements have come out have been uh, mind boggling. Other ones have been, you know, I thought Clyde's was exceptionally good. Um, I think Bonnie Riggs' statement a couple of days ago was uh, excellent. I think, as I said, uh, Lauren, the, the thing, I think Kelty's statements have been good as well. So, you know, I'd, absolutely, sport integrity needs to come through um, as, as as the main priority here. Unfortunately, I do think there are some uh, some clubs that are uh, in self preservation mode. One thing we never really touched on, but I'm always interested in this because it's I think it's only three clubs in the world that have a reserve reserve team, if you will. Um, are you going to go with the reserve team next season? I know you had sort of a big team due to the reserves, but because of everything that's going on, is that going to be a, you know, harder to, to fulfil with um, with contracts and whatnot? Yeah, um, I you know I don't think we've officially come out and said either way, but I think you know the answer to that will be no. There'll be no reserve team next year. Um, I think uh, it, it's a decision we had to make. Um, to run a reserve team, don't get me wrong, I think the reserve team last year uh, was good for us. We had yeah. boys coming back from injury. Um, it meant they got good game time. It meant that young boys coming through uh, actually got competitive football. And I think when you're taking on teams like Livingston, United, Albion Rovers, um, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're pitting yourself against sometimes better opposition. So... Um, it's certainly something that uh, we've, you know, myself and Dale have discussed, and just, you know, purely from a financial point of view, um, we've said that, you know, we're not going to do it next year, which is unfortunate because uh, I think, you know, we did have you know, supporters coming along on a Monday night watching the games, and I have to be honest, I watched some cracking football in the reserves last year. Yeah. Um. You know, we saw some, you know, we saw some great games, and uh, it's disappointing. But I think just with all the unknowns that are happening just now, it's something that we just felt that, you know, we cannot, you know, we cannot commit to, um, which resultantly means that, you know, we will have a smaller squad than we had last year. There's no doubts about that. Um, carrying a big squad was the whole reason that we ran the reserves, was to make sure people had match time uh, going forward next year. That, that certainly won't be in place. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was a sort of in-joke, uh, you know, between ourselves, where the amount of signings you, you came out and, uh, on Twitter and whatnot. But uh, no, I, I think it's sensible, obviously, given the, the current climate. But I, I always, I, I think I, I've asked uh, you before, obviously, and stuff like that. But I always find uh, having a reserve side quite interesting because it's a bit different uh, from what other clubs obviously have in terms of their development and, and whatnot. But uh, are you, at, at the moment, how are Shire doing in terms of finance uh, are you, I think you're on donate a ticket have you got is there a sort of fan sort of just give me stuff like that going on yeah well like like every club you know the next couple of months are going to be financially challenging um, I think you know we uh, we set a, a GoFundMe page up very early on and it's been fantastic I think we're just just over two and a half thousand pounds have come in from that and uh the donate a ticket has been excellent. Um, I think that's just a fantastic idea, fantastic scheme. Um, and, you know, I, I think we're up about the £750 mark. I certainly know, uh, I know there's going to be a Scottish Cup uh, donate a ticket competition. I think it's starting next weekend. Uh, I think there's 32 clubs have signed up to be part of it. And in each in each round, I think every club's given away some um, some good raffle prizes to anybody that donates, and I think uh, it'll add a bit of something over you know over the coming weeks. And uh, again, it's an opportunity to you know every, if everybody can support the local club and you know try and help these clubs through. Um, you know, we've obviously committed to you know we're paying all the players um, you know all their all their contracts right up to you know either expiry date or you know throughout if they're you know if they've resigned it's the same with all the backroom staff um you know we've obviously got physios kit men all these kind of guys um and we've you know we made a very early commitment that it was the right thing to do uh was just to make sure people were you know secure that 
they, they, they knew that they had money coming in. That puts a strain on the club. Um, I think the one thing that every club's going to you know struggle with next season is the uh, sponsorship. You know, we're we're out talking to sponsors just now, and the first thing to a man that we're you know we're hearing back is most sponsors don't know what's happening with their own businesses, so they yeah. they're very you know they're very coy about you know committing anything. I think there's a lot of desire. You know, people want to do it, but um, I absolutely get that. You know, when you don't know when your own business is reopening, or you know, can can local businesses you know continue. Um, sponsorships, you know, probably the last thing in any of his mind. So it's something that we're going to, you know, we're going to need to do, and uh, we're going to need to overcome. But as I said at the start of this, the thing, the thing that you know, we've made a decision on is, you know, we're kind of hanging off until we find out the, you know, the start date back. And once we know that, we can then start making some, you know, decisions about, you know, players' budgets and uh, all the rest of it. I have to be honest, and one thing I'd like to say is, uh, you know, we obviously ground share with Falkirk, and um, you know, that's that's a cost, the same as every club's got with, you know, uh, maintaining their own grounds or ground share. And you know, Falkirk have been absolutely outstanding with us. And uh, yeah. again, right from you know, right right from the first time that um, the lockdown happened and uh, all clubs stopped training, you know, Falkirk have been, you know. Absolutely brilliant with us as a club, so we always are. Um, but I think you know, in in the time of need, you know, we could have ended up paying some huge bills for games that weren't fulfilled. And uh, I just want to say thanks to Falkirk uh, from us because you know they, they they were very quick to make uh, make an offer to us, and um, it helped us out no end. Brilliant, Andy. You kind of stole my thunder, Rubik, because I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> but uh, no, that's fantastic to hear. I, uh, I, I said it. Um, I said it a few times, but it's a weird me being a Fifer, but uh, I love Falkirk Stadium. Like, uh, I know there's a bit of a rivalry between Fife and Falkirk, eh, but no, nah, Falkirk Stadium is a fantastic ground. I always love, you know, coming to see Shire there, and uh, I, I, I don't know what it is about the ground. Uh, just a fantastic facility, really. Yeah, no, we're lucky, and. Uh... You know, it's uh, you know. I think I don't think you'll you'll speak to any Shire fan that wouldn't rather have you know first part back again and um, playing on their own ground. Um, unfortunately, where we you know where we are in our history just now, um, you know that that that's not something that can happen and it's not something that's on the horizon. So, um, you know, us being in with Falkirk just now. It certainly, you know, it, 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 from a facility point of view, um, there are a few facilities I can think of that are better than it. Um, Falkirk as a club have been absolutely outstanding with us um, right the way through from, you know, opening up the boardroom through to, you know, um, helping us out. Uh, the fact that the boys train there as well means that, you know, we're not having to move around locations training. Uh, the boys can come in, you know, we get used to the dressing rooms, uh, training nights. All our kit is uh, stored in the ground, and uh, you know, from from everything right the way through, from you know the, the dressing rooms, the physio facilities, the gymnasium facilities, right through you know to the playing surface, um, it's top quality. So, again, you know, it, it, it's something that you know we we've spoken to Falkirk about continuing on with, and uh, you know they're they're absolutely up for it, and as are we. So, uh, I don't think that will change anytime soon. Brilliant, mate. And uh, just to touch on uh, the season, how did you feel that the season went and sort of where do you just want to be? I take it you, you, you want to be back up there uh, next season or when we uh, return to football? Yeah, that's, you know, I, I think when you look at our season, um, it came down to a couple of, you know, a couple of games. Um, I think on our day, we absolutely are a match for anybody. Um, I think, you know, we, we lost to Kelty 1-0 uh, down at Falkirk Stadium. And I think anybody that was at that game would say, you know, we were by far the better team. Um, and, you know, uh, I think Nathan Austin scored a goal late on. Uh, same thing happened with Isco Bride. You know, we absolutely played Isco Bride off the park and, you know, they scored a late winner. Um, you know, let ourselves down badly a couple, of games, a couple of games where, you know, boys just, you know, didn't perform as, you know, as they potentially can. Um, but I think when, you know, I think you were at the, the game up at Kelty, um, the the two two game. Yeah, that's probably one of the best games of football I've seen for a long, long time, and it was a good advert for, you know, the Lowland League. It was two teams going absolutely hell for leather at it, and uh, there was some good skill on display. There was some 
good old fashioned um, robust football on display. <laughs> and uh, I think, you know, it, it, it was a game that, you know, although it was 2 2 and we were 2 0 down, we actually felt we should have won it. So, yeah. you know, it, it, it's a tough league. You know, it, it, it's if you, you know, if you don't turn up every week, you will get punished. And I think that that was that was the story of our season. Um, you know, we played, you know, we we played some of the top teams off the park and and you know lost, and uh, we slipped up a couple of occasions. But you know, the boys are always you know the boys are always told before they go out, and you know, I can hear Derek saying it now. You know, do not underestimate teams in this league. Or, you know, you you you'll pay the price, and that that was the story of our season. Just not enough consistency. Yeah, and, and it's interesting what you said about the, you know, up against the likes of Kelty and BSC and whatnot, because uh, Kelty, both games, uh, I thought you were the better team. And uh, I, I saw, the, you know, bits of the game against BSC that you played at Falkirk. You, I think you smashed them, really. And then they had one chance through ball, and then that was it. You, you know, 1 0 defeat. I mean, what what can you really say? I mean, I thought you actually played really well in them games, but obviously, it was, you know, you just didn't get the results at the end of the day. Yeah, no, I think it's exactly that. You know, um, I, I think uh, the BSC game was exactly the same as you know the East Coast Bright game uh, previous. By far the better team um, could take our chances at one end, and then you know went to sleep, lost a silly goal at the other end, and that's you know that's what costs you. That's you know it, it costs you you know league titles, it costs you positions, um, and I, I, I suppose that's why we love football. It's uh, it's you know unpredictable, but um, yeah, no, I'm sure. You know, listen, we've we've signed the backbone of um, the you know the side uh, from this season for next year, and uh, hopefully we'll be adding you know adding quality to that. I know Derek's got a list that um, he keeps shoving under my nose, and uh, as soon as we you know as soon as we know what's happening, we'll endeavour to get as many of these boys in, and you know to retain some of the boys that we've got just now that that haven't signed. So. Um, it's about building. It's about building on it. And just finally, mate, uh, I don't know if you spied my team of the season. I had Nicky Lowe and Jamie Dishington. Uh, I know I spoke to you throughout the season on on boys uh, from Shire. Obviously, I had if I hadn't even seen a lot of Shire or whatnot. But uh, is there yeah. anyone else that deserves a bit of a mention uh, and the sort of that's impressed this season for Shire? I'm sure there is a few boys because there's a few guys that probably just missed out for me. I think that I think there is, and you know, I think I think we've got quality right the way throughout the team. Um, I think the one that probably you know, and I think I actually saw a couple of the Kelty boys uh, put their teams of the season out, and it was young Reese Peggy that was uh, in there. And I think Reese, you know, Reese had an outstanding season for us. Um, he actually ended up filling in at left back quite a bit for us um, because Willie Orr had an injury early on in the season, and you know, the lad was just outstanding, and. Uh, He's one of the, you know, he's one of the lads that you, he, he just wants to play football and he wants to, you know, he, he, he'll give his all. Um, I think he played in the middle of the park in a couple of the Kelty games and, and absolutely held his own. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Reece, Reece Peggy was great. Marty Orr, um, at, for me, you know, he was one of our players of the season. Um, you know, it, he made the right back slot his and he, he, he absolutely outstanding. You know, big, big tappy. Um, could probably play in every team in that division and, you know, if not teams above, um, just, you know, commanding. But for me, you know, Nick, Nicky Lowe, I thought, was one of the outstanding players in the whole division. And uh, I think, you know, that's a couple of years ago, if you'd said that you would have boys like Nathan Austin and Nicky Lowe playing in the Lowland League, people were looked at you, you know, funnily. But now it's, you know, the quality is gradually growing, and uh, when you've got boys like Nicky playing, Nicky's a joy just to have. Um, Nicky just wants to play football. I think uh, I think he played in every single reserve game for us as well, let alone every first team game this season. Yeah, and uh, yeah, left. I think that's that's kind of why Reese was kind of. I had so much pelters between trying to choose between Scott Linton and uh, and uh, Jonathan Brown at Bonnie Rig, obviously. So left back was just immense competition there. And for right back, I was uh, glad to see BSC. Uh, the Players' Player of the Year was Jamie McCormack. because I got a wee bit of pelters for putting him in. But you know, it's it's great to that you you know you there's more than you know one or two, three or four players that could 
rightfully uh, being a team of the season. That's you know you mentioned it there the terms of quality, but it's just unreal trying to pick. Like it was so so much easier last season. I would say um, you know East Kilbride doing really well. Jamie Dishington, I think, was in my team last year, but when when he played for Spartans and stuff. But it was a lot easier last year than it was this year. That's why I had to put a sixteen uh, instead of the standard eleven. Yeah, I think I think there's quality in every single team. You know, I think in you know you you look at you know the Stirling Uni team. Um, yeah. You know, there's some there's some cracking boys in there. You know, Sybil have got some you know some some outstanding players in their teams as well. Um, you know. Spartans are, you know, Spartans have always got quality there. Uh, you know, BSC, you know, you've got Jamie Mills one side and uh, Jim McCormack the other side, you know, probably two, you know, two of the best fullbacks in the division as well. So, no, listen, there's, there's quality there and there's quality that could play right the way through. Um, you know, you know, Big Sean Brown can play at a higher level. You know, Tommy Orr at BSC can play at a higher level without any question. Um, so you know, oh, the Lowland League's in a good position just now for quality, and I suspect next season you'll see you'll see more of that coming in. So Tom Orr was a difficult one for me because I had obviously I, I chose to- Thomas Collins because of the games I saw BSC. I thought he was outstanding, uh, but yeah, it was again t- leaving out Thomas Orr was kind of a difficult decision as well. Eh? But when you've got a guy like Nathan Austin who scored what thirty odd goals. You know, you have he has to be in it automatically, but I, I think the key thing just now is, you know, um, I think one of the very very early statements I put out about our club, I said, you know, football doesn't really matter just now. Um, yeah. As much as we all get emotional about it, and um, we all love talking about it, and more than anything, we all love you know going and watching and being involved in it. I think the key thing just now is, uh, you know, stay at home. As I talked about earlier on, I'm I'm in a privileged position that I get to see frontline workers working every day. Um, you know, don't do anything stupid. Stay at home and you know make sure that we get out of this uh, as soon as we can, and you know um, saving as many lives as we can. Brilliant, mate. And it's and it's always great speaking to you, Andy. Hopefully, you know I'm looking forward to the day I can get back down to Falkirk Stadium, catch up with you, Dale, and the the lads. It's uh, you know I'm missing it well, at the moment, mate. You know, you're always welcome and uh, keep doing the good work. I've enjoyed listening to all the podcasts and uh, I certainly know, you know, a lot of the boys do as well. Um, so, good work, guys. Cheers, Andy. Uh, catch up soon, mate. Obviously, cheers for all your work and uh, keep safe, power, right? Will do. You and yourself. 